This video is about the intermediate value theorem, which states that if we have a function f that is continuous on a closed and bounded interval a, b, and the number between the endpoint values f of a and f of b, then there exists a point c between a and b at which the function takes on this intermediate value n. So the intermediate value theorem really confirms our intuition about continuous functions or on closed intervals. Namely, if I have this closed interval a, b, and I try to connect at the two points, two red points, with the graph of a continuous function, then uh, no matter how I do it, uh, for every intermediate value between f of a and f of b, such as uh, this one, there will be a point between a and b at which this intermediate value is taken on. Notice that um, th there need not be just one of these uh, points between a and b for this intermediate value there we have multiple points between a and b at which it's take, the value is taken on, but there will be at least one guaranteed by the intermediate value theorem. Okay, so the intermediate value theorem, which sometimes shortened, we shorten to IVT, it seems like a simple enough uh, theorem, but, but actually this statement is equivalent to saying that the set of real numbers is complete. So the completeness of the real numbers, reals, is roughly speaking uh, the fact that there are no gaps or holes between real numbers. So the real number line is, re is really a continuum. Um, contrast that with uh, the set of rational numbers or fractions. There we know that if we, if we put them on the number line, there will be holes in between them, um, separating them, and those are the irrational numbers, like the square root of 2, for example. So this is a powerful uh, result, the intermediate value theorem, and it has some very nice consequences or corollaries. Uh, two of them I would like to mention. One of the corollaries is that if those endpoint values happen to be negative and positive, then 0 is an intermediate value, so 0 must be taken on by the function somewhere in between. Uh, the uh, endpoints. Second is that by this theorem we see that uh, continuous functions map intervals along the x-axis to intervals along the y-axis. So this is a very nice uh, property um, of continuous functions indeed. Um, with these examples and results it's time for some questions. So consider the function f of x equals the sine of x and select all correct st statements from below. So pause the video and select the correct statements. I hope you paused it and realized that all statements were uh, correct, true indeed. The sine function is continuous between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. There exists um, a number between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 at which the sine function takes on the value a half. This is at uh, um, x equals pi over 6. And uh, it's true that um, a half is indeed an intermediate value, so it's between the endpoint values of uh, negative 1 and positive 1. Okay, next question. Is it true or false that the equation x minus the cosine of x equals 0 has a solution between 0 and pi over 2? So pause the video and select your answer now. Hope you paused it and have realized that this is indeed true. There is a solution between 0 and pi over 2. And this is because the intermediate value theorem guarantees, due to the left-hand side, that function being continuous on this closed interval and the endpoint values being negative and positive, namely at x equals 0 we get the endpoint value negative 1, at x equals pi over 2 we get the endpoint value pi over 2. So between negative 1 and pi over 2, 0 is an intermediate value. And, uh, that um, value should be taken on at some point between uh, these endpoints. So it has a solution. Next, suppose that f is continuous and vanishes, becomes zero, only at x equals a half and x equals, at x equals positive two. Is it true or false that if f at zero is positive, then f at one is also positive? So pause the video and select your answer now. Yes, it is true. And it is because of the intermediate value theorem. So this is a continuous function. Uh, so we may cons continuous, it's not specified where, so we can assume that's continuous everywhere. So we can take a uh, closed interval uh, that includes negative one and positive one. We know that at positive, negative one and positive one, it becomes zero. 
So uh, there cannot be more points at which it becomes zero. So it is, if it is positive at zero, x equals zero, then as x goes from zero to two, it cannot become zero again, because then there would be more points. And it cannot become negative even, because then there must, at, at, at one, because then there must be a point between zero and one, when it becomes zero again, and th that's uh, not possible. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.